he is an American, prepared to accept his responsibility to protect and defend his nation and those he loves. That is the soldier's mission, a mission which has never changed. From the moment he is handed his rifle in basic training, the modern soldier begins to accept his first responsibility. He must learn, and learn well, the survival of the nation today ultimately rests upon each soldier's ability to handle his complex weapons with expert skill and accuracy. It is the responsibility of the modern American soldier that he must learn many weapons and learn them well. For the Army, there is also a responsibility to teach the soldier every trick in the manual that he may need to survive in combat, to supply him with the best equipment and the finest training program in the world so that he may have the best chance of accomplishing his mission and coming out alive. The enemy is strong and cunning, and if the American soldier is to win, he must know a great deal more than he ever did before. By accepting this responsibility to learn, the soldier is giving warning to his enemies that he is preparing himself to be smarter, stronger, quicker, and more accurate than they. He is learning to be part of a team where every man's life depends on how well his buddy has learned his job. A job that must be second to none. The preparation for the moment that would bring the army nurse to your side began months before back home in the United States. After three years of professional schooling, the nurses were given four weeks of basic training. In those early days, perhaps the nurse wondered why she had to sit through seemingly endless classes and submit to rigid discipline. Often, while muscles ached and groaned, she may have wondered why it was necessary to take those long hikes or grope her way through a gassed area. Yet there were demands that would require of her perfect physical health and stamina the strength to stand up under the rigors of combat nursing. Four weeks of basic training finished, the army nurse was ready to serve wherever the army needed her most. She might have found herself stationed in a general hospital right here at home, or perhaps assigned to a mobile hospital unit overseas. After she arrived, she may have helped to build the very hospital in which she worked. For the field hospital or the evacuation hospital, like a circus, had to be able to pack up and move on at a moment's notice. Its primary function was to offer immediate surgical treatment to the wounded, and that meant following ever-changing battle lines. Everyone pitched in when a mobile hospital went up, enlisted men, doctors, and nurses. Just one small instance where basic training paid off. Those muscles, toughened and hardened during the four weeks of basic back home, were equal to the job. General George S. Patton, commanding general of Third Army, had his design for combat. Hit the Germans, hit them again, keep them off balance, confuse them, discourage them, drive forward, always forward. Soldiers were conditioned toward one objective, get that German first. Surprise, skill, power the triad for victory against a strong, well-trained enemy. That morning at the railroad depot, I didn't know which side was up, but misery sure loved company. When I said goodbye to you, I was laughing, but I wasn't tickled. And the first thing I heard when I stopped at some place in the middle of no place. All right, men. 
on behalf of the United States Army and the reception center here at this camp, we're glad to welcome you here today and into the United States Army. We kept passing troop trains going back and forth all over the country. We finally arrived at a place called Military Secret. But this much I can tell you, it was cold. And even before we had a chance to thaw out, they had us in the school of the soldier. The sergeant gave it to us straight. You sleep in that bed, you make it. You wear them clothes, you wash them. You walk on that floor, you clean it. There's no service here. You understand that? And I bet right now, Mama, I can make a bed better than you can. Bed! Ha! Bed! Ha! Bed! Ha! In this man's army, they want you to be tough. But tough. And I mean tough. And tough in the army means a good fighter who can stand up against a strong enemy and beat him to the draw. I saw some soldiering that was beautiful to behold. Better tell Uncle Everett to quit joking about the wax. Because these girls have forgotten more about jeeps and trucks than he'll ever know. So we called our Minutemen, the National Guard to the 48 states, and placed them into federal service. And most important, Congress passed the Selective Service Act. For the first time in our history, we began mobilizing an army while still at peace. The first number is serial number 158. Number which has just been drawn is 192.